The first season of Mackenzie Gore with the Washington Nationals has wrapped up. And I think the big question is, how good can Mackenzie Gore be? You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you guys for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And I'm your host, Ryan Clary. And of course, you can follow me over on Twitter at RyanClary11, as well as the show page at LO underscore Nationals. And while you're at it, make sure to subscribe to Locked On Nationals wherever you get your podcast, including on YouTube. Just search Locked On Nationals there. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Later on in today's show, we will be getting into what Mackenzie Gore has to improve on. And this show is all about Mackenzie Gore as it is his official 2023 breakdown talking about all the good, the bad, and much, much more and looking on and beyond in the 2024 and in the future. But we're going to start off with just simple reactions from this 2023 season when it came to Mackenzie Gore. And when the Nationals traded for him back in last July, he was kind of like the puzzling name of that whole trade package. Now, Mackenzie Gore was always a big-time prospect, top five pick out of the 2017 MLB draft. Big time prospect, top 10 prospect. Again, in that similar conversation with CJ Abrams as one of the better packages in that deal. But when we talk about Mackenzie Gore, there's been a lot of different things surrounding him. Number one, his injury history down in the minor leagues. Now, it's not some lengthy, long, really bad injury history, but he has been banged up in the past. But even further more than that, when you talk about Gore and really the hyped up prospect that he was getting drafted top five, out of high school, a left-handed pitching prospect. Number one, that's pretty rare. Just starting right then and there, when you are drafted out of high school as a pitcher in the top five, given all the money that Mackenzie Gore was given at that time, you don't really see that all too often. Because when it comes to high school pitchers, number one, the competition that you're facing is a lot less than what it would be in college, obviously. But even furthermore than that, it's kind of tough to predict what this guy could be. There's a lot of wild card situations there in which is this just a lack of talent that he's facing? Obviously, when you're scouting Mackenzie Gore, a lot of different things stand up. Number one, back when his, if you remember when he was drafted in 2017, even early on in his minor league career, he had some wacky windup where it was sort of like Clayton Kershaw back in the day where he really kind of gets his leg high up there. It was a really weird motion, but Mackenzie Gore, I think he has proven this in 2023. He is special. I truly believe in the fact that Mackenzie Gore has kind of taken these steps. And really, while the numbers may not be all that great, they may not be the most best numbers for rookie pitchers out there. It's definitely not Steven Strasburg in 2010. But even then, Mackenzie Gore showed us something. And that what he showed me, in my opinion, was that this guy belongs. He's going to be an everyday big league kind of pitcher. When you look at Mackenzie Gore, I think one thing stands out in particular. Number one, his competitiveness out there. When I watch Mackenzie Gore, and I think when you watch Mackenzie Gore, he just has that presence on the mound where you have a lot of faith in him. It's kind of similar to when you look back at Max Scherzer and really the competitiveness. and on, It just seems like he's on edge every second of his outing. Now, some people probably don't really like that. In fact, a lot of people don't really like that. But also, if you're going to compare Max Scherzer to Mackenzie Gore, which I think I've seen some people throw around, not out that it's he's going to have some Hall of Fame career, but this kid's really good. The one thing that stood out to me this year was that I could trust him in any situation. You saw different pitchers out there, whether it be a rookie like Jake Irvin or Patrick Corbin. And if you were going up against the Atlanta Braves, for instance, you would kind of sit there and say, oh boy, this is going to be rough. 
But with Mackenzie Gore, when he was going out there, it doesn't matter who he was going to pitch against. I felt like the Nationals had a fighting chance, even if he was going to have that bad day, which he had over this course of the season. He had a lot of them. But even then, I think there was a lot more good than bad when talking about Mackenzie Gore this season. And number one, the most impressive thing for Gore was that he stayed healthy throughout the entirety of the 2023 season. He had some blister issues, but even then, that is not a concern in my opinion. That's just bad luck. He had it a few times, whatever. At that moment, you can't really think in and sound the alarms over a blister issue. That's just fine. Put some more lotion on or whatever the heck it takes to get better at that. That was his main issue, though. Just those blisters. And I think that also kind of affected a lot of his starts, as we saw in the back half of the season. But even furthermore than that, with Mackenzie Gore and really the numbers that have been really good, in my opinion, was obviously his strikeout rate. Because this year, having 10 strikeouts per nine innings, which is what he finished at, that is something that you can kind of hold on to and say, this guy right then and there, just showing those numbers as they are, he's got the stuff to get swings and misses. He's got the stuff that can put away big batters, whether it be Ronald Acuna or Matt Olson or what name that big bat in the NL East. He has that kind of potential to go toe-to-toe with the best. And while his ERA plus was at a 97, meaning he was a tick below average as far as pitchers go in that category, Mackenzie Gore, in my opinion, this rookie season was still a slam dunk success. Getting 27 starts, 136 and a third innings pitch. And in that time frame as well, only giving up 134 hits. Mackenzie Gore's season was a success. This was a good building block into going into 2024 and beyond and thinking that this guy could be the next ace, which we'll discuss a little later on. But Mackenzie Gore, to me, there's just so much more good than bad this season. And I can't just, I can talk about the numbers and all the different things about it. But it's even beyond the numbers for it. It's just when you're sitting there watching the game, and let's say the Nationals, they need to win game 162 to go in the postseason. At this moment in time, who's the one pitcher that you'd want out there? I look at Josiah Gray. He's obviously in the conversation. And other than that, it's Mackenzie Gore. And between those two guys, I just have that feeling that Mackenzie Gore is that guy that you want to get done. That you're the guy that you want to go out there in game seven or in any clinching scenario or the last game of the year where you have got to win and make it to the postseason, Mackenzie Gore is that guy who I want out there. I want him taking the ball in game seven of the World Series. That is kind of the feeling that I got from watching Mackenzie Gore. And again, the numbers having a 4-4-2 ERA and even beyond that, having a fielding independent pitching of a 4-8-9, which isn't all that great you still saw the success in the stuff that he has as a whole that's going to help him and propel him throughout his career. Because you can talk about rookie pitchers. Rookie pitchers, a lot of these times, it's tough to really just get into the swing of things. Obviously, there's a lot of different guys who just come up and click right away. But even then, you can tell right away with Mackenzie Gore that this guy is going to be a very good big league kind of player. And beyond the numbers... Just having that comfortability with him out there, having him take the mound, knowing that he's locked up the Nationals over the next five years, six years, whatever it is at this point. This is going to be someone that when we are in October again, when we are playing at this time like we were a few years back in 2019, this is going to be the guy who you want to take the mound. You want him out there. It's not one of those situations where, You have Joe Ross out there, and you're like, eh, I don't really want this. I don't know how this is going to go. But with Mackenzie Gore, you feel just a sense of comfort with him out there. And again, I think the big question is, kind of heading into this offseason, will he take this next step and kind of be the ace of the staff? Now, I think the Nationals probably could potentially sign someone, but also... The guy that we have in-house right now, which is Mackenzie Gore, this is going to be someone who has that potential. And I think because of the injury history down in the minors and having some struggles as well, and really just not being all that great last year in San Diego, he had his fairs of ups and downs. But even then, the big question with Gore is, 
can this guy be that ace? Can he be that guy to really be at the top of the rotation? And maybe you don't have to go sign that next Max Scherzer of the organization or that next name that ace starting pitcher on any other team that a team signs. That's the kind of question, in my opinion, that we're entering for 2024. I've seen it with him. I believe in him. I believe in the prospect. But the big question is, can he take these next steps into being a very good big league pitcher? I'm going to answer that question and get into some thoughts on that. But before we do that, let me tell you guys about our friends over at FanDuel. And guys, October baseball is back. And you can make sure your postseason debut is with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So join FanDuel today and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place your first $5 bet, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to create your new account. Then you can get it on the action from the first pitch until the final out. Bet on everything from strikeouts to home runs to who will win the game. And if you don't want to wait the whole game to get a W, predict what will happen in the next at bat with quick bets so head on over to fanduel.com slash locked on right now set up to the plate this post season with two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed make every moment more with fanduel the official sports betting partner of major league baseball now let's get back into it as the big question is could mckenzie gore be the ace of the staff in 2024. Now, it's a tricky question because there's a lot of different factors to consider here. Josiah Gray was the best pitcher on this national staff this season. He was. But I project Mackenzie Gore to be better. I just do. And looking beyond those stuff and really just kind of using these thoughts and having him being a former top prospect, being a top five pick, being a kind of a generational kind of talent with Mackenzie Gore, being a left-handed pitcher out of high school. This was someone who was a very, very hyped up prospect coming out of those high school ranks. But as of right now, I do believe I'm willing to bet. I am willing to put my eggs in this basket and say that Mackenzie Gore is going to be the ace of the 2024 Nationals. And even then, again, I kind of alluded to it earlier of this show. I truly believe that Mackenzie Gore, even this last year, while it wasn't all that great, I still believe in the fact that this was going to be someone who I would trust with the game on the line. In any situation, whatever it is, that is the guy I want out there. So going forward, I think at this moment with the guys that we have on this roster, not including potential free agent or whatever, Mackenzie Gore is the guy. He is the man. He is the ace of this national staff moving forward. And also, let's just start it right here. This is the expectation for Mackenzie Gore. When the Nationals, when he was included in that package, they weren't hoping for someone that would be a good three starter for them down the line. This was someone who always has the potential and still does have the potential to be your ace. And while you may look at the numbers and say, well, why wasn't he better in certain categories? Why was he walking so many guys at this point? Why did he give up a lot of home run balls? And isn't that a little alarming? Well, yeah, you can talk about this. Number one, probably the number one cause of concern for Mackenzie Gore was for this year, his home run total per nine innings jumped doubled. Last year, it was a 0.9, and in 2023, it jumped to 1.8 home runs per nine innings. Right then and there, that can just tell you the problem. You're missing the zone. You're missing inside the zone, in fact, as we've kind of talked about a lot this year. I will take that issue, though, over other issues, including walking guys, which he did improve on in the 2023 season. In 2022 with the Padres, He walked 4.8 batters per nine innings, and then he improved that to 3.8 batters per nine innings. That is one less walk per nine. Right then and there, that is a big improvement from year one going into year two. And we always talk about this with Josiah Gray. We talked about it a lot last year in the offseason and what he needs to improve on. Mackenzie Gore is in the same situation here. He is a young pitcher who has been missing a lot in the zone, similar to what Josiah Gray was doing, and he just got taken advantage of in which scenarios where he gave up the long ball. And we kind of saw that a lot over the course of the second half of the season because if you remember the first stretch, 
back in early April all the way through mid-May. His first eight starts with the Washington Nationals were very good. And it wasn't just like one of those things where it was like, oh, like he was getting a little lucky. No, this guy was really good for this Nationals team. His first eight starts this year, 41 innings pitch, and only gave up four home run balls in those eight starts. 51 strikeouts in those 41 innings pitch. Only 15 earned runs. He walked 21 batters, which is relatively pretty damn high. And he had a 3 2 9 ERA with a 3 5 7 fielding independent pitching. Now, that low FIP right there, that kind of tells me a lot about Mackenzie Gore, really the best version of Gore, which is this is going to be someone who will be able to control a lot of different things when he's up there. When you had the swing and miss stuff, that Mackenzie Gore does have. This is going to be a huge, really kind of turning point in his career, in my opinion. This is kind of why I believe in the fact that Gore is going to be the ace of this staff because you can get lucky a lot. Josiah Gray, there are some numbers that indicate he was lucky in the year of 2023. But beyond that, Mackenzie Gore and Josiah Gray, they're both kind of in this together. These two guys have had the same struggles early on in their career. Mackenzie Gore is a little bit less of what Gray had, but even then, Josiah took the step up this year. He was an all-star, and he deserved to be an all-star. He was really good for this Nationals team. But what Mackenzie did this year, I just can't stop thinking about the fact that this is going to be someone who's going to generate a ton of swing and misses, especially at a young age, of which he is. Second year in the majors, his underlying statistics and really just kind of getting into the deep dive numbers or whatever you want to talk about with him, all those check the boxes as well. As his fastball velocity ranks 68th percentile, his chase percentage was in the 56th percentile, his whiff percentage was in the 64th percentile, and his strikeout percentage was in the 69th percentile. That tells you right then and there, as a second year kind of guy, Really, it's not a rookie, but he's sort of a rookie, in my opinion, after he's a rookie with the Nationals. At least that's the way I think about it. That's the kind of guy, though, that takes those next steps into being an ace of a staff. Those are the kind of numbers that you really talk about and you can see when it comes to aces. When you talk about Max Scherzer, his percentiles are also in similar trajectories. And really talking about his strikeout percentage and where that ranks amongst major league pitchers, I mean, oh my God, striking out guys in the 69th percentile as a 24-year-old, first year in the major leagues for a full healthy season, that is a huge step up for really anyone. And even discussing his walks, which definitely was sort of an issue this year, which is in the 29th percentile, it could have been a lot worse, and which we have seen in the past with Nationals pitchers. But talking about what Gore did best, what stuck out to me was that This is going to be someone who's going to get swings and misses. And he has the stuff and really a lot of the vertical break as well with his fastball that has a ton of vertical break on it. There's a lot of different things to like with Mackenzie Gore. But number one, one of my favorite things about Gore is that his secondary pitches and how often he really just kind of relies on his fastball. I think there's a little bit more to it with Gore. When you talk about an ace and really kind of what they do, they can generate a ton of swing and misses, not just off their number one pitch, but also their secondary pitches, whether it be your curveball or your slider, changeup, whatever it is. Mackenzie Gore this year, this is where you can talk about a little bit of a struggle with Gore. Number one, he threw his fastball at a 60% clip this year. That is pretty high especially for someone who has a very good curveball and can also mix in a nice slider as well and even a changeup every now and then. And even then, his changeup, while I'm sure there's reasons as to why he doesn't use his changeup as often as he does, because he only threw it 72 times this season, but even then, that was one of his better pitches when it comes to the numbers and generating putaways or whatever you want to talk about or whiffs, because that was his Highest percentage as far as his whip percentage goes at 38.2% on this season. There's a lot of different things that you could look at with Gore and say, yeah, he needs to improve in this area. Yeah, he needs to take a step up 
and not walk as many guys and really not hurt himself and get down in the count early on. But there's also stuff like talking about his curveball and really the step up that we have seen this year and really the lack of hard contact against that. And while at times you saw a lot of his curveballs were getting rocked around a little bit, you saw the potential of it. And you saw when it was on, Rob Friedman, pitching ninja. How many times did he post a Mackenzie Gore curveball breaking in the dirt that made a hitter look stupid? Because I remember Ronald Acuna Jr. going up against him. It wasn't that easy for my guy. The National League MVP. It was not that easy. Mookie Betts as well. There's a lot of different things with McKenzie here that you can say, I like that. Having a 1-4 whip on this season as well. There's just a lot to like with Mackenzie Gore and the strides and the steps that he has taken entering this offseason. So speaking of entering the offseason, kind of different things. Where Gore needs to improve on, because obviously he's not a finished product. He's not close to a finished product. But even then, I think we're not that far away. Let me tell you guys what Gore needs to improve on and really what I want to see and also how the Nationals can help him in this department because I think the Nationals and Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, I think there's a lot to be said about how they can help them and even more so, what will they do to help them? But before we do that, let me tell you guys about our friends over at Jace Medical. And guys, when we tell you about Jace, I want you to know that modern medical care and treatment are important, but our global supply chains are fragile. Things like pandemics, natural disasters, and foreign travel may cut you off from the treatment you need. Jace Medical is your solution. Just fill out their online form and one of Jace Medical's board certified physicians will review it to determine whether medications are safe and appropriate. Then Jace will send your prescriptions to one of their partner pharmacies where your order will be filled and mailed directly to your home. You can also send your physician a message for answers to treatment related questions any time. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional $20 off by using my code locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. Now let's get into what McKenzie Gore really has to improve on entering this season. And again, a lot of the underlying numbers kind of tell you that this is going to be someone who will be at the front line of this rotation for years to come. But there are numbers in which he did kind of take a little bit of a step back in, and we highlighted this a little bit earlier. Number one, his home runs per nine inning doubled so far in 2023. He gave up 27 home runs, which over 27 starts, not all that great. Averaging one home run per start, walking 57 batters in those 136 and a third innings pitch. All those numbers right there, not all of them are great. But even then, I try to look at it as an expanded role here. Like last year with San Diego, which kind of gives you what to expect so far this season. Again, he started off really, really hot with them back in the first two months, similar to what he did with the Nationals, hovering around a 3-5 ERA early on this season. But you saw him as we got into the summer, guys were starting to get the long ball off him. You saw a lot of different things because even then, his first eight starts this year, he only gave up four earned, four home runs. Not four earned runs. That would have been really good, but he did not only do that. Four home runs over his first eight starts. That right there for someone who is a young pitcher learning up in the major leagues, that is impressive. That right then and there, you can kind of look at and say, that's a moral victory that I'll take. Now, while you'd maybe even like for him to cut that off just a little bit, you still saw a lot of different things that you can say, this guy is going to be good. But one of the one things that, and over time you've seen it with a lot of different pitchers like Josiah Gray, Max Scherzer even in this conversation, what killed him most is the long ball. And now again, if you were to look at Max Scherzer and throughout his career, this is someone who has always given up the long ball. He's led the major leagues in home runs plenty of times in his career. He's led the National League plenty of times and as well as the American League. When he was with the Nationals talking about Max Scherzer, The guy gave up home runs. But even then, multiple Cy Youngs, 
top five Cy Young finisher. But even then, furthermore than that, this is kind of someone that you can say, well, if he can give up the long ball, on which he certainly did this year, 27 of them in 27 starts, but he can still have good underlying numbers. Will you take that? Will you accept that? Well, yeah, of course I'll accept that. If he's going to have good results still, and that's just going to be kind of his thorn in the thigh that you can say, then yeah, I'll take that if he's going to be a good, solid pitcher. But even then, I would like to see him cut off from that because I truly do believe that this is probably the best pitching prospect the Nationals have had since Steven Strasburg. A lot of people would say maybe Lucas Giolito. And yeah, Lucas Giolito was really good. But even then, I think Mackenzie Gore's ceiling is a lot higher than Giolito's because I think his his underlying mechanics and just everything about Gore being a lefty, getting the swings and misses, striking out a lot of guys, not really giving up all too many walks and seeing a drastic improvement from year one into year two from that, I think that's the reason as to why I say this is probably the best young pitcher the Nationals have had in quite some time. Truly, that's what it seems like in my opinion. Now, again, he's not going to be, or if he has a Steven Strasburg-like career, sign me up yesterday for that. I'm not saying that's going to happen. But I'm just saying this is going to be someone in which this organization, they haven't really had this sort of pitching talent, this young sort of pitching talent since Giolito or Steven Strasburg. That's the kind of talent that Mackenzie Gore provides for this national team. And really, you can talk a lot about his walk rate and his home run rate and while you'd like to see him cut down a little bit on those aspects. But I even think this, as he just kind of gets into the swing of things, as he just kind of take these next steps in his development, having this full healthy year one under his belt is going to be a big stepping stone for him. Because again, this is like the 100th time I've mentioned this. And if you're an everydayer, you've probably heard this before. Mike Rizzo last year around this time, speaking with the media, talked about how He was really happy with Josiah Gray's season, and I was kind of like dumbfounded by it, like scratching my head, like, what are you talking about? His numbers were awful. He led the National League in walks. He led Major League Baseball in home runs given up. And he was like, no, like being healthy for an entire season when you're this young and learning what it takes to pitch every five, six days, that is an important factor in a pitcher's development. Well, Mackenzie Gore was healthy. Again, the only thing he really battled this year was the fact that he had blisters on his left hand. That sucks. That's just bad luck. That's going to happen at some points in your career. But Mackenzie Gore was healthy. And he was healthy his full year one up in the majors with the Nationals. That's going to be a big thing for this team down the line. That's going to be a big thing for Mackenzie Gore as well. Now he knows what to expect. And even then with the Padres last year, while he was healthy that first half of the season, He got hurt, was shut down when he traded to the Nationals, which was the right decision for the record. Furthermore than that, though, the big question is with Gore, and what we kind of answered today is, will this guy be the ace of the staff? And I truly do believe he's the best talent that we have by far when it comes to pitchers on this roster. He's a better talent than Josiah Gray. Definitely a better talent than Jake Irvin, Trevor Williams, and Patrick Corbin, A lot, all those guys included. This is going to be the guide for the Nationals. But with that said, pairing him with a free agent sort of pitcher, like an Aaron Nola maybe, or a Sonny Gray, whatever it is, that certainly would not be a bad thing. Because similar to where we are with Josiah Gray, this is someone talking about Gray who could be your number two sort of pitcher on a good team, but even then would be a much better three arm. And if you have them out there as your third best starting pitcher, you feel great about that with Gray. What's similar to Mackenzie Gore. As of right now, I can see him developing into being that guy, into being a Cy Young contender down the road. But if you were to pair him with kind of that veteran type of guy like an Aaron Nola or a Sonny Gray or whatever that is, I think that would just work perfectly fine in my truly humble opinion. Thank you guys for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every single day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And on tomorrow's show, I will be joined by Andrew Golden of the Washington Post 
to discuss some more of these coaching changes and really just what they mean as a whole for the organization. I'm getting some nerdy baseball stuff with my guy, Andrew, so you'll make sure to want to listen to that. But of course, I will see you guys then, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Go Nats.